so welcome to the car. Thank you. <laughs> nice ride. It's been, what, well, we met, I think, when I was like 19 years old. When did you start interning at Channel 5? In like 95. Okay. Um, wow, right in the middle of crazy confluence of Cleveland sporting events. You had the Indians going to the World Series, yeah. and a few weeks later the Browns announced they're moving. Yes. You, you stepped in. I did. Pretty but, crazy times. Well, I was interning on the morning exchange, so I wasn't really entrenched in a lot of what was happening in the news department. And you, so in the mid-90s, were you the sports director at that point? Because I feel like when we met, you were the um, weekend, weekend anchor. Yeah, my career, it, it was crazy in, in terms of how fast things happen. I started in 1990, January of 1990, I started as an intern in the sports department with Nev Chandler. Hmm. And uh, I did that for a couple of years and literally I was like, okay, this just isn't going to happen. You know, I was trying to get it, I was sending tapes everywhere from Salem, Oregon to Tupelo, Mississippi. And I always get these nice letters back, thanks, but we don't, we're not hiring right now. At least you got a letter back. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't think it was going to happen. and. And so I, I literally went to the Archway Cookie Company in Ashland, Ohio, in my hometown. And I had had a summer job with them when I was in college. And I literally, like, begged them for a job. And the guy who was the president at that time at Archway, he said to me, you know, I think you ought to give this a little more time. And I walked out of there like my soul had been crushed. I'm like, I can't even get a real job. Because Nev and I used to joke all the time, you know, if this TV thing doesn't work out, we'll have to get real jobs, you know. Yeah. And... <laughs> So I just didn't know what to do. I'm like, I can't even get a, a job in the real world. Uh, this TV thing isn't working out. And within a week, Mark Rosenberger from WVIZ called and said, we're looking for somebody to help with our uh, announcing team for the high school football game of the week. And it was like, finally, an opportunity. And I did that, and um, it, was, it was awesome. And a couple years later, uh, I got an opportunity to be the 2020 ticker update guy at KNR uh -huh. and that was huge because now my voice was on the air every 20 minutes for a three four hour shift and people are starting to get an idea who I was what I was about and uh, and then unfortunately that's when about a year after that it's when Nev was diagnosed with cancer so mm -hmm. he was taking time off for treatments and they asked me to help fill in on the air so I was doing that and and then it, things just happened so fast so crazy the Indians Shortly thereafter, asked me to host their pregame radio show. Shortly thereafter, when you ended up at uh, Channel 5. Yeah, and then Channel 5 hired me full-time to be a, a sports reporter. And then I became the weekend anchor a year later. And two years after that, I was the main anchor. That happened fast. So there's this period of time where you feel like nothing's, nothing's going to happen. happen. I'm not getting a bite. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then a lot happened in... I mean, I know you said Ashland's really home, but then yeah. when you think of Cleveland, I mean, that kind of becomes an extension of home base, sure. like, and is a, a major market. So at that yeah. time, Cleveland was, I mean, still in the top 20, but what was it I, when you... I don't know, but I never mm -hmm. thought this was going to be where I would start my career. I thought, you know, you got to go to a small market and work your way back, and it just didn't work out that way for me. It, it wasn't that it wasn't, you know, any less frustrating for people who start in small markets. It just yeah. took a little longer time for me. But the worth, it was well worth the wait. It just, it was just uh, extraordinary circumstances that led to all these dominoes falling into place for me. And then as Nev used to tell me all the time, and you know, he was such a tremendous mentor for me. Uh, you know, when I started my internship, we had so much fun in between the six and 11 o'clock shows. You know, Nev could impersonate so many people. He could do Art Modell, he did Lenny Wilkins, he did Sam Ritigliano. He did Herb Score, who we worked with on radio uh, with the Indians for years, and Herb used to say, eh, he does me better than I do me. <laughs> and, and Nev could, he could just, he'd do, he'd do these impersonations, and, and so and I... he'd do them on the air. He'd do them on the air, but, you know, between shows, he and I would go back and forth doing impersonations, and we just had a ball, and we really hit it off, and uh, I, you know, my wife has convinced me that there's a plan for all of us, regardless, mm -hmm. and... Um, you know, there's a path, and what's meant to be is going to happen, both good and bad. And for whatever reason, we're meant to experience all these things in our lifetime. But I know in my heart that I would not have had the career I've had if I hadn't met Neb Chandler. I mean, he, he came to BW when I was in college and met with me and listened to my tape. And he's the one who said, have you ever thought about an internship? And literally, Andrea, I was like, what's an internship? I didn't even know what that was. I didn't know there was such a thing. And so that internship opened the door to TV to me, and you know, 
know, the rest is history. Has there ever been a time then where you got inside your own head because you moved fairly quickly in this business to a very high level, achieved, you know, you achieved really great success. Along the way, did you ever think to yourself, <laughs> can, I, can I do this? Like they they picked me and I want it, but can I do this? <laughs> I can honestly tell you that my confidence has never really lacked or wavered. But one of my greatest disappointments, you know, as tragic as Nev dying was for his family, and I can't imagine that because he was so young. He was 47 years, 46, 47 years old when he died. Um, and for the viewers and the fans who loved and cherished him, on a personal level, it was crushing for me, first of all, because I'd, I'd never had anybody that close to me that I knew that well die before. I was 26 years old. It was the first mm-hmm. time really somebody like that had died. I, I couldn't say his name for years without just getting emotional and crying. But also, it was disappointing because I didn't have him there when I was going through all those experiences as my career was growing to talk to him about it for advice. What do you think about this? What about that? Um, because he was so good at knowing the right words. I'll never forget, Andrea, the first time Channel 5 said, you're going to anchor the 11 o'clock sportscast. I was slightly terrified. <laughs> and I went yeah. into work, and this was because Nev was taking time off for cancer treatments at that time. And I went into work, and there was an envelope at, at the desk, and uh, it was a, a note from Nev. And he wrote wonderful things, and just saying, look, this isn't You've earned this opportunity. It's, it's your time. It's your chance to run with it. And I remember he said at the very end, remember the kiss theory. Keep it simple, stupid. And just little things like that. Um, you know, he was just such a tremendous, tremendous uh, influence for me in my career. Do you still have that note? Yes. Yeah. You pull yeah. it out every now and then? Every once in a while, yeah. It. I dig through my, my box of mementos. But, yeah, that letter is uh, definitely one of my cherished keepsakes. So... Was it always a dream to do play-by-play yes. for the Indians specifically or just to do play-by-play for a professional sports team? Yeah, I think just doing play-by-play. I mean, mm-hmm. baseball would have been my first choice um, because I, I just I love the game. I love the grind. It's every day. It's six months. I always loved football. You know, when I was a kid playing sports through high school and into college, that was my favorite sport. So what I was good at. Is that what you played? I, I stunk at baseball. I couldn't hit a lick. Is that right? Um, from what I remember, it was a long time ago. Uh, but uh, I loved football, but I just enjoyed There's something about baseball, uh, the length of the season, the ability to tell stories. You know, football, and I, I still love doing football games. We did the high school championships mm-hmm. on Sports Time Ohio for years. I loved it. But a football telecast, a broadcast, is so intense because it's a couple hours Every play is huge. Every play matters. You're just kind of into it. Baseball is more laid back. There's a pace to it. Uh, not every game is the end of the world, obviously, until you get late in the season. But there are moments in a baseball game where you inch forward. And you're like, this is this is huge. This could swing the game one way or the other. But I, I love them both. But um, so I I do love the game. To some, they would say it moves a little slowly. And I know that Major League Baseball talks about how can they speed the game up a little bit. I'm not sure how you feel about that. But I do wonder, as doing play-by-play, if a game gets to be a little long. Like, you're on the air, though. So you've got to keep your energy level up for sometimes a really long period of time. Is that the more challenging part? Or is it saying some of the names that you have to say? Well... I think, look, we had a year a few years ago in 2012. In the month of August, we lost all but, I think it was three or four games. So we played maybe 26 games. I think we lost 22 of them. It was brutal. And it's not fun when you know going in, you really don't have much of a chance to win this game. And so that's when you're challenged as an announcer. How can we try to keep the fans interested? You know, the viewers that are watching, how can we try to engage them? So you look for anything you you can, whether it's telling stories, whether it's talking about the future, the potential of a player, knowing full well that you're probably going to lose this game. But let's talk about down the road. You know, when you have a young player, I remember when Michael Brantley and Jason Kipnis came on board. You know, they were young players, but they were exciting. They had energy. And you could see the future with those guys playing. Now, in the moment, it wasn't pretty. But you could see the future potential that these guys had. And that's what we tried to focus on. And obviously that's come to fruition with what we've seen recently now. Has there been a player or maybe a couple along the way that 
when the team wasn't able to work something out with them or they went somewhere else, like you really felt not only that pain as a fan, but also as a broadcaster, like, oh, God, I'm going to miss not covering yeah. this guy day in and day out. There's There have been a lot of those guys. You, you can't help but get close to the players. I mean, we were with them for six months every day. You develop relationships. I know we're supposed to maintain sort of a, you know, a, a, a sort of a step back you know you have to be objective uh mm -hmm. and i understand that but you, it's automatic you're going to get close to him you're going to get close to terry francona if you spend a month with terry francona and you don't like him there's something wrong with you our business really in any business people talk about that word chemistry um with you and rick manning did you feel that there was chemistry right away <laughs> or did that take um some time to develop for you because you know when you're in sync with somebody yeah the funny thing with me and arch is that we knew each other and had worked together before we started announcing together the indians had this show called tribe tv uh, in i think it started in 1996 so we were the two knuckleheads doing that show together and we just had a lot of fun with it yeah. and you know we you know hoot on each other and and we had a lot of fun doing it and you know we would do some stuff together with at that time it was fox sports net fox sports ohio and you know i was the sideline reporter when he and john sanders were doing the game mm -hmm. so we had interacted quite a bit i'd filled in for john a couple of times so we had worked some games together um so there was no oh i got to get to know this guy when we started when i yeah. started doing tv we had known each other so it just felt easy it felt natural and we have a great time and, and it it's funny because sometimes people think Oh, those guys must not get along. Archie's kind of harsh. That's just Archie. You know, he's uh -huh. just gonna he's just gonna blurt things out and say what's on his mind. He's not gonna couch his comments. He's not gonna like soft pedal it. He just says what he's feeling. Yeah. And uh, I th we have a great time, and I think we have a great you know working relationship. But we also have a, have a really fun relationship outside of the game too. With the broadcast, let me ask you: Where did it's gone to Souvenir City? Ha how did that happen? <laughs> Because well, I think of, well, obviously I think of you because it's your phrase. It's kind of it's to the, the point where sometimes then we'll say it in our family. <laughs> it, it, it actually started when I was at Channel 5, when uh -huh. I was doing highlights, and Manny Ramirez was peppering balls to the bleachers in 95, like one after another after another. And I just thought, man, there's all these people up there. Everybody up there is getting a souvenir. And I thought, when I went on the air that night, I'm going to, and Manny Ramirez hits a home run to Souvenir City. And it just became part of my you know, lexicon when I would do the highlights at night. And then and it, when I started doing games, you know, play by play, I thought, well, that, that'd be fun to kind of incorporate that in to my home run call to sort of give a nod to Channel 5. It's also a nod to Nev Chandler. It's sort of a, a way to let people know that's where I came from and that's yeah. part of my past. That has something to do maybe with those Ashland roots too, where it is like... <laughs> Ohio roots, right? Yeah. We want people to know where we're from. I'm look. I'm not far removed uh, at all from you know the small town kid in Ashland, Ohio. I mean that's that's who I am. Um, yeah, I'm the announcer for the Indians, and sometimes I go to places and people look and point and stare. But I'm still just a small town kid, and uh, which is weird to say because I'm almost fifty, but I don't feel fifty. I think you don't baseball, look fifty. I think baseball keeps you young too. Do you think it's because you're around these young guys? Yes. Like, yes. What, what I, what cracks me up, really anytime there's a big win, um, like think about the home opener, that there's this walk-off and you've got all these young guys who run and tackle each other, like little boys, right? Like yep. they're, they're adults playing a kid's game. So that happens and then fast forward, or I should say rewind to last year during like the playoffs and then going to the World Series and you're down there in the locker room getting sprayed <laughs> with champagne. I don't know if it was good champagne or cheap it, champagne. It, it was pretty good. <laughs> I can't even remember, but it, was, it's, it all tastes good when you win. It, it, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> it all tastes good when you win. So, um, but you're with these guys, like how can you not feel like a kid, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. And and those are the moments you just you, you kind of live for because mm -hmm. they don't come around every year. I mean, you think about teams like the Yankees when they went to the playoffs and the World Series all those years. Like, they got spoiled, you know, mm -hmm. because it, it, usually it, nobody's that good where it's guaranteed every year you're going to be in the playoffs. So for us, you know, like me and Hammy and Archie, the guys who've been around the experience 95 and 97 getting to the World Series, this was a long time coming last year. And uh, as close as they were in 07, 
and I thought they were going to get to the World Series that year. We I didn't. thought so too. That was crushing. Mm -hmm. um, and but this year, you know, even as disappointed I was, I was when they didn't win at the end. When I went into the clubhouse, it was such a cool mm -hmm. atmosphere. It was guys were talking about, you know, we gave it everything we had. We came close, but this isn't the end. This is just the beginning for us. Mm -hmm. And I walked out of there not feeling glum, but feeling, you know what? I'm disappointed, but I'm. These guys are going to be back. This is. This team has a good nucleus. It's got a chance to be good for a long time. This isn't a one-hit wonder. Yeah. And so that was that was. But I will have to say this. So I walk out of the clubhouse. It's 1:30 in the morning. By the time that game ended, and we got in, and got our interviews. So Andre Knott and I are going out on the field to do our last uh, segment for that post-game show. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking we're going back out to an empty stadium. We're going to hear the guys with the, the leaf blowers emptying out all the, the trash cans. Yeah. And I walk out on the field. I was like, oh no. The whole lower bowl, from foul pole to foul pole, was all Cubs fans. They were still there. Wow. The players were on the field, still celebrating. I thought that's when I got that that pit in my stomach, uh -huh. going, "Oh, this this really stinks." I now still, I still have to watch this. <laughs> yeah, you not, could understand cool. for them, but it yeah, didn't feel sure. great on our end. Well, I don't know if you, you know, I was I follow you on Twitter, and I saw you retweet. Um, something that Jason Kipnis had sent out because you know he's starting some kind of a clothing line or involved yeah. in a clothing line, but it was a really cool video that was produced based on the man in the arena speech, which I love, yeah. and your voice is mixed into it. But Jason has he also wrote a really interesting article about his perspective. It was very well written, but that same idea of we're not done, like we right. still have a great team. But but at the same time. You know, and not that baseball is any different than any of the other professional sports. Nothing's guaranteed. Mm -mm. You know, and baseball is the hardest sport, I think, to get to the postseason. You know, football, a bunch of teams get in. Basketball, half the league, it seems like, is in. Same thing in hockey. Baseball, and you better be, you, you can't afford any major slip-ups during the season. You better win 90 or more games or you're not going to be even invited to the postseason. When I was an intern at Channel 5, and I wanted to be on the air. So my internship was weekdays, but I would go in on the weekends because that's when it was a little bit slower. And if you're an intern and you want to be a reporter, you know, the photographers will shoot some stand-ups for you so you can put your demo tape together. And you were the weekend sports reporter at the time. And you would buy us all food. <laughs> You'd bring food in from Johnny Mango. Yeah. And so it was the first time I ever had it. And I was like, this stuff is the bomb. It was so good. But I also thought, how cool was that? That you were buying food for some of us. Like, you didn't really know me from Adam. I was just an intern. You know what? It's it's really not that big a thing. It's just you pass on what's been given to you. Whether it's buying somebody a meal or you know spending a few minutes with them to pump them up, give them some advice that they ask for, whatever the case is, you're a fool if you don't take the time to try and give back. Well... You certainly did that through food, and that's a good way to people's hearts. <laughs> um, but your so your wife opened the restaurant, and you now had this for probably what close to tw twenty couple decades 1996, now. Ninety six, so it's yeah. twenty twenty one years old this October. That's awesome. And I mean, especially in the restaurant business, to go through the waves where the economy can bottom out, yeah. and a lot of people. I've had friends who've lost their restaurant businesses because of what's going on with the economy so to stay strong like you said and in an area that wasn't always popular but has now built up so you become this anchor she's um, worked so hard to to develop a clientele that feels like that's their place it's not mm -hmm. her place it's their place and uh you know there are a lot of regulars it's like cheers that you see a lot of the same people come in on the weekends you know, it's usually, a, a, you know, the same kind of people that are hanging out at the bar and they're all talking about what they did, you know, last night or the night before. And yeah. everybody's having a great time. And it, it's, it's become sort of a gathering place for Ohio City. Well, we're here right now, yeah. actually. Maybe I should call her and see if she's busy. Oh, here she is. Hi. Hi. Hi guys. How Hi. are you? Good. How are you? I am good. You're so pretty. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I, look I, I was like, you look pretty too. Oh. Are those for us? Yes. Do you come in? Do you want to come in? Here, come in. But come to the middle. Here, let me scoot my chair up a little bit. You're tiny. That's because you, you yoga all the to, time. You don't we should, have to scoot. Your you should tell everyone. I love it that you two yoga together. Right? Yeah. The family that but, yogas together stays together. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. Oh, yeah? Who wants what? what? Okay, I as long as there's no mango, otherwise I can drink anything. Sweet beet, Kaylee, 
and the sun drop, carrot and ab, or oh. carrot and orange. Ooh, that sounds good. Okay. And it goes with my dress. I'm going kale aid. All right. Okay. Cheers. 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 <gasps> These are so colorful. Did you make them yourself? Uh-huh. Uh, mm-hmm. That's good. We were, your husband was just saying how proud he is of you because I said oh you opened this restaurant he goes no I didn't she did it on her own oh, and just thanks. really that you you know you came into a community when there really was nothing going on in Ohio City what was it about Ohio City that you loved it was cheap and it's a fun neighborhood mm-hmm. and it's close to everything and they've been good to you here yeah mm-hmm. oh my gosh we have such a loyal following our regulars are fantastic. And then did you love to see how everything's grown and yes. that there are more restaurants It's amazing. Here? you got no great idea. neighbors with great Momocho. neighbors. I know. Mm-hmm. We're in the food scene here. It's really exciting. And, this is really good, by the way. And, and, and that's the thing is that, you know, people think about Johnny Mango. It's like, well, there's healthy things to eat. So if you're mm-hmm. vegan or vegetarian, there's great options. Yeah. But you, it's not just that. I mean, if you're a, if you're a carnivore... Uh, there's plenty to that choose from as you. well, yeah. <laughs> um, but the, you know, the juice drinks, the margaritas are off the charts. Well, thank you. Huh? And so are the mojitos. Yes. Has was Matt always healthy? Like, were you both always into health and fitness, or do you think you pulled him along? Matt's and... always <laughs> been super healthy. Yeah. No chicken wings Lord have ever crossed these ever. lips. Never. <laughs> No, if it wasn't for her, I'd be 400 pounds. I'd be the biggest slob in the world. How did she get you into yoga? Because I would imagine she got you into yoga. It took a while. Not the reverse. uh, Because when she first started doing it, I was like, eh, uh, I got to work out. I got to run on a treadmill or lift some weights or play some Mm -hmm. basketball. I got to... This yoga thing. Yeah, the athlete mindset where you just work, 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 work until you injure yourself. And I finally, I finally started. I don't know how, what it was that, okay, I'm going to try it. And the first few times, I was like, I don't know. My wrists are killing me because I was dumping all my weight into my wrists. And I, was, mm-hmm. I don't know about this. But I stayed with it, and eventually I was just like, wow, this is this is legit. And, you know, you, I, the hot yoga is the best because you come out of there feeling like you did a complete workout because you're drenched in sweat. Drenched, um, and usually in a packed class. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because and, I know you you like inner bliss. And I, I, love mm-hmm. I knew it was you legit too. when there were times where, like, I'm literally gasping for air mm-hmm. you're not you're not going anywhere you're not running but the poses sometimes are so strenuous that i'm like gasping for air so that's when i realized okay this is no joke and then when i saw joe thomas doing it and zadrina solgowska's doing it i thought well if these guys are pro athletes so it's good enough for them it's good enough for anybody can they do handstands those guys I have not seen them attempt it. Oh, gosh, because no. he would hit the ceiling yeah. probably. He could probably <laughs> easily do one because his feet would. <laughs> yeah, easily, right? How long did it take you to do the handstand, headstand, oh, or handstand? He's knocked me out many times in yeah. the headstand. I, I have no fear. He's knocked I've, me out. I'm really good at falling down. I've, I'm really I've, good at falling I've down. I've perfected yes. falling down, so I, I, I don't, I'm not afraid to, to do something. He's not afraid to take out his wife in, in, while she's in her head. Not bad, right? Everybody okay? Collateral damage. What can I say? Thank you so Cheers. much Thank for the you. drink and for what you're doing in Ohio City. Love it. You definitely have been somebody driving Cleveland. Thanks. From back in, what did we say, 96? Mm-hmm. You go. Thank I you. like it. I love it. A good, strong businesswoman. Thank you. <laughs> Extra cheers to that. I'll be back for that mojito. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thank Bye, you. Everybody. I'll Bye. see you all after the game. Okay. <laughs> you hard on yourself, and um, if you've gotten better at that, how did you achieve being a little easier on yourself? Uh, I don't know that you ever get to that point. You, you do the best you can to try and as, you know... When a game's over, you just got to let it go. You got to walk away. It's over. You, you can't go back and, and redo it. Man, I wish I would have said something different. Or, or I, There are a lot of times where I'll get done with the game. It's like, oh, man, I had this story I was going to tell about so-and-so, and it would have fit perfectly, and I forgot about it. Hey, that happens. You know, you, you just got to try to do better the next time or try to, you know, make a mental note and, and work forward. But um, I don't think you ever get past self-critiquing. But you don't want to get to the point where every night you're going back and watching the game and nitpicking every mistake. You drive yourself crazy. Did you ever do that in no. your career? It, that was good advice I got when I first started out um, from a veteran newsman who said, don't go back and watch every show. Mm-hmm. Go back and watch every once in a while. You know, maybe once a month, go grab a tape, put it in the machine, and just look at what you're doing. You know, look at your mannerisms and you know, critique. Don't critique what you're doing, but how you're doing it. And I thought that was great advice because 
yeah, you'll drive yourself nuts if you want to try and go back every show, every show. I noticed a common theme throughout this conversation, and that was giving back. And I, I know there are a number of charities you've been very supportive of. You, you've done a lot of work with The Gathering Place. Yeah. What? Talk about what brought you to The Gathering Place and why that's a special place for you. I'll try. This is not easy because uh, I lost my mom in 09. And, um, uh, you know, it's a, tough it's, very, it's a difficult subject to talk about. But, uh, you know, she died of cancer. And uh, I just look for ways to help uh, give back. And uh, The Gathering Place was a... It's just such a wonderful organization because they provide a community and resources for people who are dealing with cancer. Mm-hmm. And, all right, look, people need treatment. And, and I get what all the doctors and all the medical profession do. That's obviously on the front line of the war against mm-hmm. cancer. Mm-hmm. But what about the family? You know, what about what about the, the 10-year-old kid who's watching his dad or his mom go through this? Mm-hmm. And the gathering place gives them a place to go, uh-huh, to talk about it, support groups. Um, they're just wonderful people. And, and thank God that there are people like that in the world that created this environment. And so Rick and I, you know, we thought it was a great charity to... To give to so I think we we started by doing uh, you know a dollar for every run or five bucks for every home run or whatever the, whatever the deal was and, and it's just been it's just been great for us to be involved uh, to give back uh, to to that specific charity but you know I, I also did a, a charity golf tournament in Ashland and uh, raised money for a scholarship fund in my mom's name and raised money for the Ashland County Cancer Association which again is a local organization that gives money to cancer patients you know when your hair falls out and you're going through chemo they get you a wig uh, if you need money for nutritional supplements because your body's just you know, beat up from all the chemo they, that's where you go to get it so they they're helping the people who are dealing with all the side effects and everything else that goes along with that awful disease and then we also raise money for team focus which is a really neat deal started by the Gottfried family Mike Gottfried his brother Joe and they grew up without a dad in Crestline, Ohio. And so it's a mentoring program. And for all these kids that don't have a dad and then need that male figure in their life, they, they provide you know, leadership programs and they take them on field trips and just kind of be there for them to, to help them navigate through the, the tricky pitfalls of life. You were able to take something, though, that's so difficult and touches you in probably the most painful way and do something positive with it to be able to use your voice use your contacts that's something that you can feel really good about that's truly what's a that's truly what giving back to a community is about yeah if you don't if when you have success if you don't share that with people if you don't try to help somebody else with that success that you've earned then I think you're wasting your time well Matt Underwood you have been a pleasure (laughs) I've always enjoyed you. I think you're just one of the coolest, nicest people, just genuine in the business. I'm impressed with your handstand. <laughs> <laughs> Not if you see it, you would be impressed. And I hope I'm going to be watching you through October. Me too. Yeah. Thanks, Andrea. <laughs> Thank you pleasure. so much. you got a game to call, got so call. I know you've got to take to off. Yes. All right. Thank, All right. You. Thank you. And thanks to Shelly for the Cheers. drink, too. Cheers, my it. friend. Cheers.